so thank you so much. Um, it's, it's so great to see so many here. And I would like to wish you a warmly welcome to this lecture about how to get an awesome memory. Can you all hear me well when I'm speaking like this? Yes. Yeah? If there should be any problem with the sound, or if you happen to have a question during the lecture, uh, just raise your hand and you will be allowed to ask it. So first of all, I would just like to say that I'm, I'm so happy to be here, and it's so great to be able to, to be a part of creating this amazing online memory course, and to get to have this lecture, and actually just being in Darwin is really, really cool for me. Uh, I've seen a lot of very, very interesting animals, for example, that really wouldn't like the temperature in Sweden, uh, so that's a very nice bonus. Uh, and regarding the lecture, I would like to start with a small memory uh, demonstration, uh, so sort of uh, to try to, to give you an image of what is going on in my mind while I memorize things. Uh, and to do this, I have Simon here, and he's got a, a paper. Let's see if we can get it up on the screen. Uh, a paper with uh, 30 small lines on it. Uh, and then I would like someone from the audience to just read out 30 single, digit, uh, single digits, uh, random digits, and uh, then Simon will write them down. And I would try to memorize them as they read out, and then try to recall them. All right, so just a small demonstration to, to start with. Uh, so do we have someone here that feels that they, they have a, a natural talent for randomizing digits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I have one I compared earlier, which is actually the, um, the canasta results from a game between Fire and Timothy Skinner. So there are random digits. <laughs> All right, yeah, so do you have 30 random digits there? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's great. So, okay, so, yeah, I think, yeah, it might, might be a little bit, um, like, it, it looks as if it might be prepared, since we know each other a little bit, and you have it prepared there. <laughs> uh, so, so, so we might actually take someone else just to make, it, make sure that it's no, no trick. <laughs> someone just, just, it's quite easy, you just have to, to read out digits, whichever digit comes to mind. Yeah? Someone? No, uh, oh, yeah, right, okay. Uh, so is it one person can read all the digits. So just put your hand up if you think you can do it. Yeah, right? Uh, okay, so I'd like you to uh, just give you some inst instructions and then you can start. Um, so, yeah, so read up the single digits, so between 0 and 9, and at a moderate speed, like um, 1 per second, so that Simon uh, has the time to write them down. And pretty loud and clearly so that I can hear it well. So, like, 0, 5, 9, 2, like that. All right? Uh, so yeah, start when you feel ready. Three. Right, thank you so much. Uh, okay, I will just go through them quickly in my mind to see that I've got them all. Alright, I think that I have them. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm going to, to try to, to recall them, uh, to read them out in the same order, and you, you see them here? Yes. Yeah? Uh, and if I should uh, read some did it wrong, then I want you to just shout out WRONG! <laughs> uh, so that I, <laughs> I, get the, I, I don't miss it and, and get the, the chance to, to correct myself. Alright? Okay, so are you ready from the beginning? Five. Wrong! wrong. Great, just wanted to see, see how you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this time for real. Uh, but, but keep on telling me if I'm wrong. Uh, three. One. Five, one, eight, nine, four, two, one, zero, three, 
seven, eight, three, one, zero, four, six, eight, five, three, one, six, eight, five, six, two, one, seven, five. Thank you. So, yeah, well, um, these digits will actually probably now stick in my mind for at least a couple of days. Uh, so if you'd like to, you can test me again after the lecture or if we meet in tomorrow or the day after that. Um, but yeah, actually th this was just 30 digits and uh, if, you're, if you're doing this in a memory competition, it isn't that good really. Uh, this discipline exists at the, at the memory competitions. And then it's, it's, it works the same way, that you, you listen to digits, listen, um, read out one per second, uh, but then it just continues for a very, very long time, uh, and then after it's finished you get to, to write them down in the correct order, uh, and then you, you see how many you remember. And um, I actually had the world record in this discipline uh, last year, and I, I managed to, to write down uh, 399 out of 400 uh, correct. Uh, but it was one, one eight there that should have been a zero, uh, so there's still <laughs> some room for improvement, as, as you see. Uh, so yeah, so obviously it is possible to, to remember a lot more, uh, but I thought that you might be a little bit bored if I started with six minutes of random things. <laughs> um, I'm going to, to explain exactly how, how this can be done, and actually how anyone can do what I just did. Um, but I'll save that secret for, for yeah, some more minutes, and um, right now I, I'll just tell you that uh, to remember these, these digits uh, that I just, I just did, I uh, only had to, to picture uh, a friend of mine uh, sitting with an ice cream uh, in my sofa uh, together with Ron Weasley, who was blown away by a big saxophone. And on the television set uh, there were Yoda, and he was also blown away but by a big like heart. Uh, and then uh, a high jumper, a Swedish high jumper, was jumping on a, a hula hoop on the table. Uh, and finally in the window uh, there were um, yeah, Leia from, from Star Wars, who uh, like flew up on a big beak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I do see now that some of you uh, look a little bit skeptical, um, and that's completely understandable, but I'm sure that after this lecture you'll find what I just said completely logical and natural. Uh, but to get there, I guess uh, we better start from the beginning. So my name is Jonas Vanessen, I'm 23 years old, uh, I'm coming from Sweden and um, uh, last December I was traveling with my family to, uh, to China and uh, managed to there for the second time in a row win the World Memory Championships. And that's pretty cool, uh, it's, it's pretty nice to be able to call yourself the World Memory Champion, uh, but what's actually really cool about all this is that if someone would have approached me about three years ago and told me that Jonas in a couple of years, you will be the world memory champion. Uh, I would probably have found that statement as likely as if someone would have approached me today and said that, Jonas, in two years' time, you will be the world champion of bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because as you, as you probably can see, I, I've never considered myself to, to be a very promising bodybuilder. Uh, and in much the same way, I actually, during my first 20 years on the planet, never thought that I had a particularly good memory. Uh, it was rather the opposite, like, like most people, I was often irritated at, uh, at how much I forgot. Um, like uh, the things that my friends told me, or important meetings, or uh, the things that we learned in school. Uh, which also led to that I maybe rather scribbled or uh, watched the clouds through the windows, or daydream uh, instead of studying. But ironically enough, it was also exactly these qualities that made me the world memory champion in the end. And to explain how this significant uh, transformation occurred, I think that I, uh, I have to start with an experiment uh, here, together with all of you. And this experiment, it's, um, uh, it might feel a little bit unusual, uh, a little bit odd, probably, but I would dare to say that it might change your lives forever. So I hope that you do your, your very best. Do you feel ready? <laughs> okay, solo, yeah, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that you'll do fine. Um, this experiment, it, it's actually quite simple. We actually, uh, we only, uh, we're only going to, to imagine some things placed upon our own body. So if you start by just picturing that on your head you have a small crosswalk, 
Okay, there's a crosswalk on your head. You're painted zebra stripes and there's a lot of people running back and forth, rushing over this crosswalk on your head. Okay, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to see it very clearly or, or very beautifully. You can just imagine some kind of crosswalk on your head. And if you think that it, it's difficult to see this crosswalk, uh, you might, might choose uh, the head of your, your uh, classmate or, or friend uh, and see a crosswalk on, on their head instead, if that's easier. So just, yeah, as long as you see a crosswalk on, on someone's head in here. Can anyone see some kind of crosswalk on someone's head? Yeah, great. Uh, okay, then you can forget about this. Don't think about the crosswalk at all anymore. Uh, but go on and con uh, focus completely on your ears. And now try to imagine that out of each ear, there's a big red maple leaf growing out. Okay, so you have two red maple leaves growing out of your ears. And if you think that it's getting a little bit hot in here, you can try to cool yourself with them like this. <laughs> okay, you see this red leaves? Yeah, great. Uh, then don't think about them anymore, but go on and, and focus on your eyes. Uh, and this might sound a little bit odd, but try to imagine that you, you've uh, changed one of your eyes into a hamburger. Uh, so, so instead of an eye, you have a hamburger in one of your eye holes, and uh, you can try to picture these small sesame seeds on, on top of it, and maybe you get a tear of mayonnaise going down your cheek like this. <laughs> Okay, it's so a hamburger in your eye. Looks quite funny. You don't see so much because you've got this hamburger in your, in your eye. Uh, right, then we go to the nose. And uh, this might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but uh, try to, to, to visualize that you take two, um, a pair of, of chopsticks and then very carefully put, put them up your nostrils, one in each nostril like this. And if you feel that you're, you're very you're skilled, you've got very good uh, motoric skills in your nose, then you can try to pick up a small uh, sushi bite like this. <laughs> uh, but it's really over because you, you just have to, to think uh, that you have these this chopsticks in your nose. Right. Uh, then we go to the, the mouth. And um, now think that you have a, a soccer ball, uh, like a round soccer ball in your hand. And then you're uh, putting the soccer ball into your <laughs> mouth. Okay. So it's, you get a lot of tension on the jaw like this, and it, you can taste the, the grass and the dirt from the soccer ball, but you still have it in there, all right? Mm, yeah, good, I see someone like, putting tension on the jaw, that's really, really nice. Uh, okay, there's a soccer ball in the mouth, and then um, we go to the chin. And I'd like you to, to imagine that your chin today is um, uh, a little bit more bouncy than usual. Uh, so it's almost like a small trampoline. And uh, that has caused a kangaroo to come over here, and, and this kangaroo is now jumping up and down on your chin. So when you're peeking down, you see the kangaroo go, going Okay, you see the kangaroo on his chin? Yeah. Uh, we have a few left. Uh, let's move on to the armpit. And uh, I'd like you to, to think that you, in your armpit you have got um, an Indian god sitting there and meditating. So when you look there, you see this Indian god, and you might see like four golden arms coming out under your normal arm like this. Uh, so yeah, it's <laughs> a bit unusual, but, but I'm sure that you, that you can picture it, an Indian god meditating in your armpit. And then we only got three left, so we move on to the, the belly button. And um, uh, imagine that you've, uh, you've rented out uh, the space in your belly button to a pirate. Uh, so there's a pirate now living in your belly button. And it's very, like, not so much space there, of course, and then it gets quite warm as well, so he's, he's not so happy about this. He's yelling, ARG, ARG, all the time. Okay, so you have the pirate here yelling, ARG, right? And then uh, between your knees, uh, imagine that you, you're holding, a, like, a big magic wand. Uh, you're holding it between your knees, and you're sort of swinging it around, and every time you, you do, uh, you throw a curse at someone, and uh, you hear the sound, Kazam, Kazam. Okay, so a wand with the sound gazam. And then finally, at your feet, just picture that there are a big heap of algae. Okay, so it, it stinks a little bit and it, you see all this algae, you can feel them a bit with your toes. Uh, probably very, very good for the, the nails. So algae on the floor. So how did you find that? <laughs> a little bit unusual? Very yeah? unusual. Uh, good. <laughs> I, I, uh, we will return to this in a little while, uh, but right now you can just forget about all this, don't think about it at all anymore, uh, but sit down, uh, sit back, relax, and I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, these memory competitions. So, um, did you know before this that there, uh, there was such a thing as a, a World Memory Championship? 
No, most people didn't. No, no, it's it's not the the, the biggest sport in the world uh, yet, but it's it's getting bigger every year. Uh, and there is a, a World Memory Sports Council uh, that has a lot of small tournaments uh, all over the world. Uh, there is actually even a, an Australian Open uh, in memory uh, that you can participate in if you'd like to. Uh, I'll probably go there later this year myself. And when you compete in these memory competitions, it's, it's usually uh, the same 10 disciplines. Uh, so it's like a decathlon. Uh, and it, it can be uh, one is uh, to memorize the order of a shuffle deck of cards as quickly as possible. Uh, another one is to, to memorize like a lot of digits, as many as possible in one hour. Uh, there's also one where you memorize names and faces, or a list of random words, or small dots of ink in a particular sequence. Uh, one of my own personal favorites is uh, this one. Uh, 30 minute binary digits, where you're supposed to memorize as many random ones and zeros as possible in the correct sequence. And uh, yeah, I don't know what your idea of a party is, but uh, <laughs> when uh, the memory people get together on a Friday night, it's always 30 minute binary digits uh, that is on, on the board, and we're all funny, it's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it is actually uh, quite, quite more fun than, than it might appear to be uh, first class. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll tell you a bit more about this in a moment. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, this is my, my current uh, Swedish record. Um, it's, it's a little bit under the world record, but I'm, I'm getting closer. Uh, so it's, it's about uh, 3,841 uh, binary digits uh, without any error after half an hour. And um, when you see this, this great amount of, of information, uh, you might get a picture of, of some um, slightly socially impaired super genius who is sitting in his cellar all night memorizing the phone book uh, and who can't uh, get uh, put on his own clothes himself. Uh, but as you can see, I've come here today <laughs> with clothes that I put on myself, I can guarantee you that. And uh, the fact is that, that at these memory competitions, like all the people that you meet, uh, they appear to be just ordinary people uh, from all walks of life, like uh, all kinds of jobs, uh, ages, men and women, boys and girls, uh, who in almost every case were born with just ordinary memories, but that one day stumbled upon a lecture or uh, a, a documentary or a book uh, about that thing which is called memory techniques, and which actually anyone can use to develop an amazing memory. And the good news is that there isn't even, uh, it isn't even so much about like, getting an amazing memory, but rather about discovering the fantastic memory that you already possess. Uh, because all of you uh, sitting here, and uh, the rest of the world as well, already possesses like, an extraordinary, uh, really, really brilliant memory. Uh, the only problem is that most people don't know it yet. So I'd like to make an analogy here, uh, to maybe make it a little, bo little bit more clear. Uh, if you picture uh, that you are uh, a samurai and uh, <laughs> uh, at your side you're having a sword uh, and this is not just any sword, this is actually the super stardusting sword of doom! <laughs> and this, is, uh, this happens to be the, the most powerful sword in the world, actually the most powerful sword that there ever was. Uh, it can cut through lead as if it were melting butter. It can shoot beams of uh, fire. It, it, uh, uh, get a, it gets a, a blue glow around it when there's a math professor nearby. Uh, etc. So it, it's, a, it's a really good sword. But unfortunately, you do not know that you have it. Uh, so it was exactly like this for me before. That I had this sword here, but I didn't know it. So every time that I uh, was, uh, was put in front of a, a demanding challenge, like uh, uh, maybe learning a chapter in school, or, or some vocabulary, or uh, now and then a bear. Um, the only thing that I really could do was to surrender, because I, I, I didn't know what to defend myself with. I, I didn't have anything to, to defend myself with, or at least that was what I thought, until that day about three years ago, when I happened to see a book at the library, uh, where it said that, that anyone can get an amazing memory, and I started to, to read this book, and I noticed that, hey, wait a minute. This super stardusting sword of doom, and from that day, um, I've obviously uh, been able to tackle any challenge that anyone could ever set in front of me. <laughs> so yeah, the goal today is, of course, uh, that you also shall find your super stardusting swords of doom uh, to follow this analogy, and uh, I'm pretty sure that we will succeed in this uh, because these techniques are actually quite simple. Uh, they they don't take especially much time to learn. 
uh, and they're possible to, it's possible to break them down into three rather simple steps. So let's start with step number one. And this, this first step, uh, it might seem obvious, but it's actually uh, to, to convert the thing that you want to memorize into something more memorable. Because when you think about it, there are certain things uh, that no matter how much you try to get them into your head, it just doesn't seem to work. Uh, it could be like uh, if it's a long, uninteresting book or uh, some, some complex paragraphs that you want to memorize, uh, or really anything that doesn't really interest you. While on the other hand, there are a lot of things that, that you don't even have to try to remember, but you just remember them anyway, uh, sometimes even if you don't want to remember them. Uh, like if you've seen a very, very exciting movie, uh, or uh, if you're, yeah, something fun is happening at a party, or something like that. And it's obvious that it would be really great if you could take these, these in, uh, uninteresting and, and not so memorable things and turn them into these things that just happen to, to stick in your brain without any effort. And that's of course possible to do in a lot of different ways, uh, but there's this one way uh, that has proven to be a little bit better than, than most of the others. Uh, I usually call it one method to rule them all. Uh, is, is there anyone who has got any idea uh, of what, what this, this sort of, this kind of, of memory would be? Language? No? Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually it's quite difficult to guess. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed it myself before I, I knew about this. Uh, but it's actually to memorize in images. Uh, and you might have read this some, sometime, you might have heard that, yeah, just try visualizing the things that you want to memorize, and then you'll memorize everything uh, without an effort. Uh, and of course, this doesn't help if you just, just hear that, that single line of advice and try to do it, because you, you have to know how to do it and how to use these techniques. But when you do, uh, it will make, make it possible to memorize almost anything that you'd ever want to, to memorize. Uh, and there are a lot of scientific studies that have proven the, uh, the visual memory to be the absolute best way of, of memorizing like, huge amounts of information in a short, short amount of time and get them to, to stick there in your brain for a long time. And there are probably a lot of you that, that still feel a little bit skeptical about this, so I thought that we, we shall try and see if this really can be the case, if, if this really can be uh, such a good way to memorize things using images. Uh, and we'll do this by going back in time a little bit uh, to that experiment that we did in the beginning. You remember that we did an experiment? Yeah? Great. <laughs> yeah, we would have, would have known what to do if, if you if forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's a good start. Um, so yeah, I, I think that, um, yeah, let's just, just go through this list, uh, through these, uh, these body parts and see um, how many of them you remember. And uh, yeah, we'll take one at a time and you'll get some seconds to think about what was there and then I'll count to three. And then if you remember it, you can just say it out loud. And if you've forgotten it, uh, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> uh, and it's completely all right if you've forgotten all of it because I, I didn't tell you to memorize anything and we just went through this once uh, rather quickly. Uh, it was the first try, so, so it's completely all right if er everything is gone. But uh, let's try and see if, if something got stuck there. Uh, so we start with, with uh, the head, and no one says anything, but just think about what you had on your head, and I'll count to three, and if you remember it, you can just say it out loud. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> wow, good start, okay, this, this is looking promising. Uh, we go to the ears, same thing again, I'll count to three, and if you remember it, you can just say it out loud. One, two, three. <laughs> Exactly. Leaves, red leaves, maple leaves, completely correct. Uh, okay, we go to the eye. I'll count again. One, two, three. <laughs> wow, it, it's like being in the military here, giving orders. It's, it's a really great response. Uh, okay, so and then in your nose, you had something a little bit uncomfortable. I'll count again. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> That's right. Uh, then you put something in your mouth. Uh, one, two, three. Soccer ball. Soccer ball. Wow, this is so great. It's almost the best response ever. Uh, okay, and then there was something on your kangaroo that isn't usual. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, I gave that one away, but, but I'm sure you remember it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I had the picture so clear. So yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, a kangaroo on, on your on your chin, and then uh, something in your in your armpit. <laughs> I won't say what it is this time. I'll count to three again. One, two, three. <laughs> Exactly, and in your god, <laughs> yeah, your kangaroo that you always uh, have here. Uh, okay, and then in your um, in your belly button, you had someone who moved in. Uh, one, two, three. 
yeah, pirate, uh, yelling arg. And then between your, your um, legs, you were, you're also holding something. One, two, three. A magic wand, exactly. It's, it said gazan. And then on the floor, uh, there were lots of one, two, three. A round of applause, I'd say. <laughs> Wow, so yeah, that was actually a, a really, really nice uh, result for, for doing this for the first time uh, and just going through it once. And it seems like all of you remembered all of these 10 things in order. Uh, but you may now uh, be getting the feeling that you just memorized a, a random list of, of 10 meaningless uh, objects. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that would be completely understandable. Uh, but actually, you've uh, just memorized the 10 largest countries in the world in order by surface. And how did this happen? Yeah, you might ask. Uh, well, I will explain. Uh, actually, uh, every, every uh, image corresponds to a country. And then it goes uh, from your head and down to your feet in that order. So largest to smallest. Uh, so the first one, it's, it's quite far-fetched. Uh, it's this crosswalk, and <laughs> the idea there is that the, there's this crosswalk and a lot of people are rushing over it, so that's Russia. Uh, number one there. <laughs> and then we have this, this maple leaf, is that idea? Yeah. Canada, exactly. And then it's hamburger, number three. Yes. Yeah, the US. And then uh, number four, the chopsticks. China. China. And then the soccer ball. Could be... Yeah, it's... Yeah, Brazil. In this case, it's Brazil with the latest World Cup and also the soccer ball, Brazil. And then the kangaroo. Yeah, <laughs> really well. And now this one could be a little bit tricky. This Indian god. <laughs> yeah, India, that's right. <laughs> well, absolutely great. Uh, so it's India. And then this one could be a little bit tricky, uh, really be a bit tricky. This pirate yelling, arg. Yeah. I think someone said it. Argentina. That's right. So Argentina. <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, and then it's, it's sort of the same thing with the, with the magic wand there, uh, something that sounds like that sound Kazam a little bit. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, exactly. And then the algae on the floor. Algeria. Algeria. Great. So now you can just run off these this countries in order, uh, forwards and backwards without any effort. Well done. <laughs> Uh, so this is sort of, this is how it works, this is the, the basic idea, uh, the first step, to, to convert whatever you want to memorize into something that makes more sense to the brain, uh, or not, not always more sense, but, but more, which is more fun and, and more memorable for the brain. So for example, images, which has proven to be, uh, to work very well for, for most people. Uh, and that takes us to step number two. And uh, step number two, uh, that's more about how to uh, recall these things while, once you, you got them into your brain. Uh, that might be just as tricky as actually memorizing it from the beginning. Uh, so, so let's take a, a normal situation. Uh, you're sitting and you're reading, uh, studying something. Uh, and maybe you, you, you're reading about uh, Macedonia. And you read that yeah, the, the capital of Macedonia is uh, Skopje. And then you think that, wow, I'd really like to, to memorize that. So you take this bit of information, this Skopje, and you, you put it in your brain somewhere. You don't really know where it goes or what happens, but you, you hope that it will stay there, and sometimes it does. Uh, and say so that you actually managed to get it in there this time. Uh, then a couple of days later, the real uh, problem uh, occurs. And that's when someone is, is, is confronting you and, and saying, well, I'm, I'm doing this quiz now on my mobile phone and it's really urgent. Uh, and the question is, what is the capital of, uh, of uh, Macedonia? Uh, do you know? And then you think, oh, yeah, well, oh, yeah, I, I read it at only two days ago. It, it was, um, oh, it's, um, oh, I know it, it's, uh, and then you're, you're sort of like wiggling your, your brain and you, you hope that, that it will uh, appear somehow out of here. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Is this familiar at all? Yeah. <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, that it is like this, it isn't really uh, surprising uh, because it is probably, yeah, yeah the, the reason behind this is probably that in most people, people's brains uh, it looks something like this. Uh, so just, just a big mess of, uh, of childhood memories and uh, blueberry pie recipes and uh, jokes from the latest uh, Simpsons episode, etc. Uh, and it's obvious that, that in this mess it's, it's very difficult, uh, of course, to find what you're looking for uh, in exactly the same way as it's very difficult to find things uh, in your house if, if everything is just lying around on the floor. Uh, but exactly as you can tidy up at home and put everything in its correct place, you can also clean up in your brain and make it a lot easier to find things. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it's not brainwashing, it's, it's uh, actually a nice way of, of just ordering your memories. Uh, and one of the best ways to, to do this is to use a thing that is called the memory palace. 
And uh, this is a really, really cool uh, thing. It's a very old technique, more than 2,000 years old. And uh, it sounds very flashy, but it's actually rather simple. Uh, a memory palace uh, can be any place uh, that you know kind of well, uh, like your house or uh, the university or the way to the university. Uh, just any place that you can, you can picture yourself, you can see yourself walking through this place uh, on a small walk, like a small journey, uh, when you go through your house, for example. And then along this journey, you choose small points along the way where you can place whatever you want to memorize in the shape of images. And this is actually exactly what we did with the countries. Uh, then we used our body as the memory palace, so it's, it's a place that we know sort of well. And then we had a small journey going from the head and through the ears, eyes, nose, down to our feet. And along this journey we had 10 spots or points along the way where we placed the thing that we wanted to remember, in this case, the countries. Uh, and this makes it actually a lot more uh, easy to, to recall what we memorized, because if I... Uh, yeah, you, you may take some time to think about this, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask you now, uh, which is the, the fourth uh, largest country in the world? China. Yeah, exactly. China. And then instead of having to, to hope, is it to, to, to sort of fish for this information in this soup here, inside here, you know that the, the countries, they are on your body, and then you just count one, two, three, four, and the memory of China is firmly attached to your nose in this case, <laughs> but uh, yeah, to a place so that you know that it's exactly there that you have to look to find it. And, and this thing that we did right now, it's, it's actually just a small, small taste of how extremely powerful this method is, because you can memorize thousands of things using a memory palace. Uh, and for example, when, when I'm memorizing these, these ones and zeros that I showed in the beginning, uh, I usually I, I convert them into images, of course, and then I, I usually picture myself walking through a uh, uh, and a big amusement park in Sweden, and then I might see some images there in the entrance, and then the fountain, and then the, the first uh, roller coaster, etc. And then I might do a hundred of them, and then go back to the beginning, and then the thing that you place there is almost always still where you left it. Uh, so this is a, a very, very cool and very easy uh, technique. And I, I, I'd like to show you uh, a, sort of a bigger memory palace that I've created. Uh, it's this one here. This is, uh, is there anyone who, who recognizes this view? No? No. It would be extremely surprising uh, because this is actually my, my hometown in Sweden, uh, Skövde, a very small town in the middle of Sweden. So, yeah. uh, but uh, it, it looks like this from the, from the sky and um, I sort of picture myself uh, walking through, through the city uh, on a particular journey. Uh, so it starts here at my, my old uh, high school and then goes down to the sports arena, uh, through the supermarket, through the park and away to the, the bus stops over here. And uh, along this journey, I chose uh, about 100 stops along the way, where I then could put whatever I wanted to, to memorize. And on this particular uh, memory palace, I've chosen to memorize all of the uh, Academy Award winners for best movie uh, through the ages. So yeah, it might sound as a little bit of a silly thing to memorize, uh, or quite, quite uh, unuseful, uh, especially since you don't know what half of the movies were about. Uh, but it's actually yeah, quite, you, you get a sort of a nice overview of the movie history. Uh, and it's also like that, that when you discover these techniques and you, you notice how easy suddenly everything is to memorize, you sort of get obsessed by memorizing things <laughs> and you, you grab your hands on, on whatever you, you happen to see. Uh, for example, the, the Oscar winners. Um, so, yeah, and then, yeah, I also have to tell you that I, uh, I sort of, to make it easier to, to quickly jump to the, the correct year, I've um, uh, marked every fifth year with a special uh, number image that I will tell you a little bit more about later. Uh, so I know exactly, uh, I can jump immediately to 1965 or 1970 or 1975, uh, etc. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't have to start from the beginning every time I'm looking for a year in the palace. So uh, yeah, let's, let's take a few examples. Uh, if you have a year between 1928, which was the, the, the first time they had a, the awards, and uh, 2014, which was the latest one, uh, that you've always been thinking about who, which movie won the Oscar for best movie that year, but you haven't had the time to Google it, uh, then you have the opportunity now. <laughs> 1979. 79? Mm. So then I just jumped to the closest fifth year, uh, so 1980, so it's in the park. Uh, in the park here, and then I, I go one step back, and then I can get to a, to a fountain. And in this fountain, there are two, uh, like two wrestlers, and they are uh, they're fighting each other, but they're very tired, so they're sort of hugging each other like this. And uh, a hug, or to hug in Swedish, uh, is krama, 
Uh, and the movie is Kramer versus Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, the image for that one. Uh, yeah, any other year that you've been thinking about? I'm in 62. 62? Then we go to, to 60, that's uh, at the, uh, the parking lot there. And then uh, 61 and 62, uh, it's, it's uh, someone going in through, through a door, and that's uh, uh, Lawrence riding on a camel. Uh, so it's Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> Shall we take one more example? Just to uh, yeah, okay, 57. So uh, go to 55, it's in the park, and then uh, 56 and 57. So that's, uh, that's a river and a bridge over it, so that's the, uh, the bridge on the river Kwai. Yeah. Would, did you also have one? I was going to say, I was going to put you in 2000, 2002. 2002, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, I actually taught some people this uh, earlier today, so maybe they're here and they would also know it. Uh, but 2002, then I would go to uh, it's the, the bus stops, and then 2001, go through this, uh, yeah, so 2000, that's the gladiator standing there, so it's gladiator, and I'm walking through a, a very beautiful brain, a beautiful mind, and I'll come to, to a port uh, covered in uh, something that in Swedish it's called the uh, chic actor, uh, and the movie is uh, Chicago. <laughs> so when I, when I taught them uh, this in English, I used uh, a chicken instead, so a chicken could also remind you of Chicago. Uh, yeah, so, so this is how it works with a, with a bigger memory palace, and uh, this might seem a little bit impressive when I'm standing here showing off in front of you like this. Uh, but actually it's, it's very simple and it's very easy and anyone could, could do this. Uh, so if you, against all odds, would find yourself in Skövde one day, uh, then just give me a call and we'll go this walk and I'll point at the images and you'll also know all the Academy Award winning movies after about half an hour. <laughs> uh, so a memory palace is um, obviously very good when you want to remember like, like a big amount of information. Maybe a chapter in a book or uh, a timeline in history uh, or just a long list of, of things in order. Uh, but sometimes you might want to just memorize uh, some, some small bit of information like someone's address or, uh, or the answer to a question. And then you don't of course every time have to create a whole memory palace, but you can just use this, this principle of uh, taking an image of something that you already have in your mind uh, and that has to do with this thing that you want to memorize and then create a new image of the thing that you want to learn and somehow associate this new image with the old image so that you can get to the, the new image by taking up the old image. Uh, so I'll give you an example of this, or several examples actually. Uh, names is, is uh, one of the things that most people find uh, quite difficult to remember uh, and I think that the, the main reason for this is that actually people don't really try to remember it because they think that they're so bad at remembering them uh, that they, they, they show that they will forget it anyway uh, so they don't try from the beginning. So actually just trying to remember someone's name is a very good start if you want to get better at remembering names. Uh, but you can also of course use memory techniques. Uh, and when you, when you want to memorize someone's name, you usually want to, uh, when you see the person, when you see the person's face, uh, you want to be able to say, uh, oh hello there, Tim. Uh, so that's the first thing, and then the, the second thing is that you, you want the, the person's name to actually be Tim. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> both of these things you can achieve with this method. So, so yeah, it's, it's use the same principle. You, you have sort of a trigger image, um, the trigger image is supposed to trigger the name, and in this case it's, it's the face of the person. Uh, yeah, so when you see the, the face you want to be reminded of the name. Uh, so if you take this person here, uh, is, is there anyone who, who recognizes him? No, no, it's not, uh, not surprising. It's, it's a Swedish hockey player uh, named Douglas Murray. Uh, so you stop by looking at the face and, and just choose, you can choose some particular feature of the face uh, where you then place the image of the name. Uh, and it doesn't matter so much uh, which feature, uh, just the first thing that strikes you. We might pick the nose just to have a, a place to place the image. And then you, you just create the first image that, that comes to mind when you hear the name. Um, it can be anything, just a free association, and then you, you sort of attach this image to the nose. So if we start with the first name, Douglas, uh, any image that comes to mind? Dog. Yeah, a dog? Yeah, it's very simple. So, so a dog, that's, that's enough, that would remind you of, of Douglas. Uh, so then you might, might um, associate this, this dog to the nose somehow. Uh, you might think that, the, see that this dog is, is clanging from the nose, uh, hanging from the nose like this, or uh, I would have probably thought that, that the nose, uh, like the dog is, is going through the nose, like he's put it through the nose like a nose ring like this, uh, something like that. Uh, <laughs> and then once you've seen this image, you, you won't forget it. Uh, so, so next time you see the nose, you see the dog, and oh, hello Douglas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, it actually works very well. And uh, then if you, if you also like to, to remember the second name, uh, then you just create an image of that as well and attach it to the first image. 
Uh, and in this case, I actually didn't uh, uh, realize this until yesterday, until after I, I showed this for some people, uh, that the, the longest river in Australia is called Moray, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that before. So, so yeah, that might be a very nice and simple image that you'd probably just imagine that the, the dog is, is sort of uh, opening his mouth and, and the whole river ray is coming out of his, his mouth or something like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's a nice image. I didn't know it when I, when I painted these images, so, so I, uh, I show some other images. Um, yeah, and it's good also to show some, some different examples. Like uh, if I would do it, uh, if I wouldn't know about uh, the Murray River, I'd probably think that the yeah, Murray, it sounds a lot like hooray. Uh, and that's what you say to someone uh, who's having a birthday in Sweden. Uh, so I'd picture a birthday cake uh, to remind me about this. So maybe I'll just see that the dog is holding a, a birthday cake. Um, and, and usually it, it's enough to, to just get a little clue about the name and that will remind you about it. So hooray should be enough to, to remember Murray. But if you really want to, to make certain that you memorize uh, that it starts with an M and not an H, uh, then you might also imagine that this, this birthday cake is, uh, is bought at uh, McDonald's. Uh, so it's, it's got a big M on it. Like a McDonald's and like that. And then you know, yeah, hooray, and then um, yeah, Murray. Uh, or you might have had a completely different image in mind. Uh, you might think that Murray, it sounds a little bit like, like murder. Uh, so you'd, you'd imagine that this dog is trying to murder uh, Douglas, uh, like this. Uh, or just anything. So it's, it's very personal. Uh, you can just choose the first image that comes to mind. And, and once you've gotten used to it, this, it's then quite easy to just throw images in the faces of people and then memorize a lot of names uh, in a short amount of time. So yeah, please try this at, at the next party or, or thing to go into. Um, yeah, so I, I think that uh, we, yeah, I, I'd like to to try and give you some uh, uh, some pictures to, to memorize um, in this way, like like attaching associating one, one image with another image, uh, and these images they, they will make some sense uh, later, uh, maybe not right now, but but in a while. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you're up to it, we can go on and memorize some images, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so let's start with, um, with attaching uh, Sputnik or associating Sputnik, uh, the, the Soviet satellite, the first satellite that, that was uh, put up, uh, with Luke Skywalker. So uh, does everyone know who Luke Skywalker is? Yeah? Yeah, exactly, from Star Wars. Uh, so if you, if you don't know him, then you can just imagine any guy uh, whose name is Luke. So it, just, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be Luke Skywalker. It can be any Luke, uh, and then associate this person with Sputnik. And you can do this in any way you'd like. Um, I would probably just picture Luke sitting on Sputnik and traveling uh, on it and looking down on Earth, uh, see what kind of planet it is. Uh, something like this. Um, so I'll, I'll give an example for every image, but, but if you come up with something else, you can use your own association instead. Uh, and yeah, as you see here, he's also got uh, Yoda on his back, uh, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, it's only Luke who is the, the important person here. So you just have to imagine Luke uh, riding on Sputnik. Okay, that's the first one. Uh, then let's move on to Elvis Presley. And uh, we'll associate him with uh, a cookie. So uh, you might picture that you're, you're uh, finally, you, like you've gotten tickets to, to a concert with Elvis Presley, and you're finally there, you're, you're seeing the king live, it's really amazing. Uh, but then suddenly someone is throwing a cookie in uh, Elvis's chest so that he actually dies. Uh, and it's horrible, uh, but yeah, shit happens, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So Elvis get, gets a cookie in his chest and dies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably something that you'd, you'd remember. Uh, so just, yeah, Elvis and a cookie. Uh, and if, if you come up with something else, you might see him just eating a big cookie or anything, but, but yeah, you can use this image. Uh, so Elvis and cookie, and then uh, let's go on to uh, this. Uh, this is actually the, the Swedish parliament. Uh, and this one might be a little bit more tricky because we're going to associate it with um, a special Swedish uh, chocolate brand uh, called Marabu. You don't recognize that? No, no, it's probably not so famous outside of Sweden. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to use it anyway. Uh, so yeah, you might just try to remember that the name of this brand is Marabu, uh, like the Marabu store, store. Um, or, or, yeah, or, or you might, if you're a Nintendo fan, uh, you might picture uh, Mario and Boo fighting over a piece of chocolate. So Mario, Boo, Marabu. Uh, yeah, or, or just try to remember, it's Marabu. Uh, and to then remember this, this chocolate brand and associate this with uh, with Sweden's parliament. Uh, you might uh, imagine that Sweden is actually sponsored by uh, Marabu. Uh, it isn't, of course, but, but you, yeah, you can imagine that, that every morning every uh, member of parliament is getting a, a piece of chocolate when they arrive to make them happy during the day. And there might even be a big uh, piece of chocolate uh, behind the, the desk there uh, to make sure everyone sees that Marabu is the sponsor of Sweden. 
Uh, so that's what the, what the packages looks like. So Marabo and Sweden. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. I, I, I don't blame you if you don't remember the name Marabo. Uh, and then we, we have the last image. And to this one, we're actually going to associate three different images. Uh, so it's the, yeah, the, the Sydney Opera House, obviously. Uh, and um, the first thing that we want to associate with this is uh, a gum. Uh, it's like, like a, a chewing gum, a bubble gum. Uh, so you might imagine that um, that it's uh, yeah the, the, the first uh, you know, the first time they have a show here at the Opera House and uh, someone has put a big gum uh, up like uh, on, on the top of it uh, here somewhere uh, and when they are singing uh, and people are bre breathing uh, like a lot of a lot of uh, air is coming out and it's filling up this gum uh, to make it a big nice bubble gum like that <laughs> okay so bubble gum so or gum that's the first image. And the second image is, uh, or the second thing we want to associate with this is uh, tar. So tar, that's the, the name for the thick black thing, right? Uh, so then you, you might just think that uh, while they are painting the opera house, uh, someone, someone is painting it with tar, uh, which is completely wrong. Uh, so, so that makes it take a lot longer than usual to, to finish everything because they have to paint over this tar with, uh, with the white color. So just see some tar on top of the, the opera house. And then the last thing, which is a little bit more abstract. It's uh, it's a dozen a dozen of something uh, that we want to associate with this, and uh, yeah, then you might think, for example, that the, uh, to to get into the opera house you have to be twelve people at a time. Uh, so you might see twelve people coming in a in a, an egg carton. Uh, usually we have we have a dozen of eggs in them in Sweden uh, coming to the, the opera house like this. So a dozen of people coming to the opera house. Okay, so we've got these three images. Um, and then let's move on to something else. Do, do you think you got it all? Yeah, yeah, we'll see you later. But you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to think about it at all. Uh, I'll try to distract you with some, some other images uh, and see how well you do later. Mm. So I have some, some more, uh, more examples of, of how you can use memory techniques to remember certain things. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, of course, I, I heard before that some people had to go earlier. So if you have to leave, uh, if you have some appointment or something, uh, then I, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, if you leave, oh, of course, if you have to leave, then then you're free to leave, and I won't uh, take offense. Uh, but if you're interested in, in memorizing something more, uh, then you better stay because there's some really exciting stuff coming up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, geography is actually one of one of the the most suitable things for using memory techniques on. Uh, and it's interesting there because um, in schools uh, they're not using memory techniques at all, uh, at least on in Sweden, which is quite a shame, I think. Um, but sometimes there is like a small memory technique just coming up to the surface and then going back again. Uh, and when it does, it usually helps a lot. Uh, so, for example, there's one one country in Europe uh, that if you go into a, a Swedish uh, second grade class and ask them to paint uh, to point to different countries on the map, there's one European country that, that everyone can point to, except for Sweden. Uh, an idea of, of which? Italy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool that it also worked here. Uh, yeah, that's right. So Italy. And why is it so easy to remember where Italy is? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it looks like a shoe, or a boot, or a high heel shoe, uh, kicking a football or whatever. Uh, so, so yeah. So w once you've heard this, one, once someone has said to you, "Yeah, look at Italy. It looks like a like a high heel shoe," uh, then you'll never forget it. It's it's every time you see it, you see, "Yeah, that's Italy." And if you want to to look for it, you look for it, and you see, "Yeah, that's the shoe. That's Italy." Uh, but since this is working so extremely well and you don't even have to put an effort into it, uh, why um, settle with Italy? You can obviously use this for, for memorizing all the countries and, and all the rest of the geography of the world with a little bit of imagination. So uh, to take an example, uh, here is South America. Looks like this on the map and with a little bit of modification you can make it look like this. Uh, and I don't know if uh, it ever occurred to you, but um, Argentina, uh, it looks really a lot like, uh, like a guy who's got a, a chicken club in his eye. Uh, and he's obviously yelling, ARG, because of this. So same as the pirate, Argentina. Uh, Chile uh, looks like a, a chili pepper, very convenient. Uh, Paraguay uh, sort of looks like a, a baby in the middle there. And you might imagine that this baby is looking for his parents, so Paraguay. Uh, and uh, yeah, Colombia looks like a cool cow, etc. So, so when you start using this technique, it's, it's quite easy to, to memorize all the geography of the world uh, without much effort. And it's also uh, quite a lot of fun. Uh, and you can use the same technique to memorize like uh, bones in the body or, or different uh, organs and stuff. Just look at the shape and see what it reminds you of and then associate it somehow to, to an image. Uh, it even works with um, words and vocabulary. 
Um, it's sort of the same as, as with the names. You take something that sounds similar to it and create an image of that. And then you can remember a lot of vocabulary very quickly. Uh, I've taken a, a sort of a, a tough example here to, uh, yeah, to show how you can, how you can tackle these. Uh, so this is a word, Isishi uh, Yagalumbili. Anyone who knows which language this belongs to? Swahili, some people are saying. I, I think that's a good guess. I, I don't know much about this uh, at all, actually. Uh, but I only know this word because my, my girlfriend was uh, doing voluntary work in, in South Africa, where they spoke uh, Zulu, uh, which this is from. Uh, among other languages, of course. Uh, so this is uh, a Zulu word, and um, uh, anyone who's got an idea what it could, could mean? Eight? Yeah, that's right! Yeah, so we have some Zulu <laughs> knowledge here, anyway. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, yeah, it was a little um, clue at, at the side there, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the, th the first thing that, that may strike you is that it, it seems very uh, inconvenient to have such a long word for a digit. Uh, but apparently they, d they do, and there's probably some uh, poor guy who's got the phone number 88888 and has to tell about that the whole morning uh, when he's meeting people. Uh, but if you anyway want to, to memorize this, uh, then you can of course break it down into uh, smaller pieces. It sounds like something that you can picture as, a, as an image. Uh, so I'll probably start by, uh, by creating uh, the trigger image, or, or like the, the base image. Um, something that looks like an 8. It might be a, a racetrack or something. Uh, and then on this, I'll place these other images uh, symbolizing the, the pronunciation of the word or the, yeah, how it's spelled. So um, I'll probably start here with the uh, easy uh, and just think ironically that like, like it's ironical that this word is so easy. So easy. And then she, yaga, lombili, it sounds sort of like uh, she, uh, yoga, lamb, billy. Uh, so you might imagine um, a girl sitting on, on this racetrack doing yoga with a lamb named Billy. <laughs> and then you have the image of this. Uh, so it's, yeah, it might seem a little bit like like it takes a lot of work, but but once you got into it, it's it, you, you can do it yeah quite automatically, and then you'll have a lot of these images, and it's very easy to to yeah to see it and to remember it, and then you you won't forget it so easily. Uh, and especially if you start with shorter words, of course, it's it's easier, and then go on to longer and longer ones. Um, so now you know eight in Zulu, Isishi Yaga Lombili. And um, you may think that this is like the worst example that I could find, uh, but actually there are of course a lot worse things that you can try and memorize. Uh, for example, is there someone here who's been to uh, Bangkok? Yeah? A few people. Uh, did you know that Bangkok actually has a, a much longer name, uh, a longer official name? No? No, it's, it's, they don't use it so much, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, Bangkok, which seems to be such a short and easy name to remember, uh, is actually named this. Uh, and I'm going to give it a try. Uh, yeah, with the wrong pronunciation, of course. Krung tep maha nakon amon ratana kusin mahin tara ayutaya maha diluk popno para trachatani burirum udom rachani vet maha satana mon piman awatan satit sakatatia bitsanu kamprasit. So yeah, so this was just a lot of lot of images uh, placed on a memory palace. Uh, and then I just ran through it and read them all <laughs> in, in sequence. Uh, so that shows that you, you, can, you can memorize almost any kind of nonsense as well with this technique. <laughs> um, and this takes us to step number three, the final step. And um, yeah, I, I, yeah this, this first step, that's actually then to, to convert the things into, into something more memorable, like images. And then the second step is to, to place it somewhere or associate it to something so that you can find it easily. Um, but without the third step, both these, these first steps uh, are actually almost meaningless. Uh, so the third step is actually the, the absolutely most important one. And the third step is repetition. And now probably a lot of you drew a sigh inside, uh, and I heard a lot of you actually drawing a sigh, a real sigh as well. Uh, because you, yeah, you probably imagine that, that with these amazing techniques and these amazing stories and images, uh, it would be possible to memorize anything and you'd, you'd never have to, mem to repeat it at all. You just have it there for a very, very long time. Uh, and it's partly true, because when you memorize things with these memory techniques, you will have it there, it will stick for much longer. Uh, but if you never repeat it, it will, yeah, in the end, it will fade. Uh, so, but, but it probably stick there for, for quite some time. So if you try yourself in maybe a week or two weeks and just go through this, these countries again, you'll probably uh, surprise yourself by memorizing, uh, uh, knowing them all. So try that as well. Um, but yeah, the good news about this is that um, 
you actually don't have to repeat that much. Um, just as long as you know exactly when and how to repeat. So it's sort of a smart way of repeating. Uh, and I'll, I'll um, explain this smart repetition, um, which makes, li like the idea is that you put as little effort as possible into it and get as big results as possible out of it. So this smart repetition, it's based on, on um, uh, science from the 19th century, actually. Uh, it's a, a German uh, psychologist uh, named Hermann Ebbinghaus, who, uh, who did a lot of studies on, on people's memories. And um, yeah, he, he did just the, the, the thing that you, you would do if you wanted to, to study someone's long-term memory. He, he taught a group of people uh, some things, and then he, he tested how much of that that they remembered after a certain period of time. And then he compared different groups in different periods of time. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, and he, that concluded in this graph, which is uh, called the forgetting curve, uh, a very important curve. Uh, on this uh, vertical axis, we have uh, the person percentage of uh, the things that you memorized from the beginning that you still remember. And on this um, uh, horizontal axis, you have the, the time that has passed since you memorized things. So, uh, if, we, if we imagine just like a normal uh, student setting, like a normal lecture, you're sitting in a lecture, you're memorizing things, you're taking notes, you're quite interested, uh, trying to learn things, uh, and then directly afterwards, you, you may of course be uh, somewhere up here, uh, around 100%, and then it starts to, to go down gradually, uh, and after, say, three, four days, um, what percentage do you think that we will be on uh, after three, four days, usually, like average? 50? Yeah, another idea? 70? 30. 30? Yeah? Yeah, that's some good guesses. Uh, the actual findings uh, in this experiment uh, is that after three, three to four days, uh, the average uh, percentage that we still remember is about uh, 5 to 10 uh, percent. <laughs> so, yeah, it goes down really, really quickly. It doesn't look good at all. Uh, <laughs> and this is, yeah, so this is like the, the, the usual case. If you learn something and then, then don't repeat it, but just yeah, don't think about it, then, then it will go down this uh, quickly and then uh, it will stay here at about maybe 2-3% that you will have with you for the rest of your life. Uh, but you obviously lose a lot, a lot along the way. Uh, so this is, this is also the case if you, um, if you study, uh, as you might normally study, uh, at least we do it in Sweden, like you, you save all the work until the, the evening before the exam and then you're reading whatever you have to, to memorize like seven times, uh, then of course it might uh, be a little bit flatter here in the beginning uh, you might even uh, be able to, to get a really good grade at the exam and, and get a lot of answers correct. Uh, but then it will go down and stay yeah, approximately at, at the same level. So if someone would, would give you the same exam after some weeks, you would probably perform much worse than the first time. Uh, and I'm sure that you also have felt this, like, like you're, a lot of time you're, you're putting it in there for the exam and then it goes away and then you have to, to get it in there again next time you want to, to memorize it. Uh, but if you, instead of, of taking these, these seven repetitions uh, on the night before the exam, just uh, listen carefully at the, uh, to the lecture, lecture uh, and then just once after some hours after the, the exam uh, or the, after the lecture, and uh, maybe later the same day, just quickly go through your, your notes or go through your images in your head, just repeat what you learned quickly, then you will of course jump up again and then it will go down a little slower and stay a little higher. So with this one extra repetition, you might actually uh, twice the amount of information that you, that, you might, that you would have left from the beginning. And if you then do the same thing the day after, just quickly again go through your notes, so just think about what you learned, uh, then you'll go up again, and then go down a little bit less steep, and uh, end up even higher. So this, this, it's still not high, but it might be five times as much as, as without the repetitions. And then if you do the same thing after some days, uh, after some week, after some month, you'll actually end up flattening out almost here at 100%, or very high at least. Uh, so that means that if you, if you take these, these seven read-throughs and instead of, of placing them all at the same time, like before the, the exam, you just yeah, put them, distribute them over a longer time interval and have longer and longer time in, in between the repetitions, you will go uh, from here up to here, uh, which is quite a significant uh, difference. Uh, and yeah, and with, with the same effort and the same amount of time. So yeah, this looks really cool, uh, <laughs> I, I suppose, and it's, uh, yeah, it's very nice, uh, very nice for the colors as well, I must say. Uh, and um, yeah, in, in, in the beginning you think, wow, this is brilliant, I, I must start incorporating this uh, immediately. But then you might start thinking practically, 
then you realize that you would have to actually write down for everything that you remember, uh, write down that I'm supposed to memorize, uh, to repeat this in, in uh, three days, and this in, in seven and a half weeks, and this in, in 2.3 years, etc. And you'd actually have to, to almost hire someone just doing all that work for you. Um, but in today's modern society, there is of course excellent apps for this. Uh, and this one app, like I suppose that there are a lot of apps with the same function, but uh, the one that I'm using, it's, it's very nice, very convenient. Uh, it's called Anki, uh, A-N-K-I. Uh, apparently it means uh, to memorize in Japanese. Um, it's, uh, it's actually free for, for Android. If you have Android, it's free. Uh, I think it's called Anki Droid there. Uh, it's also free to download on your computer from the website. Uh, it does cost a little bit for iPhone, I don't really know why, uh, but uh, yeah, it's definitely worth it. Or maybe you can find something else, some similar app for that. Uh, so the way Anki works is that you, um, every time that you learn something interesting, something that you would like to remember, uh, you'd like to store into long-term memory, you just uh, put that piece of information in, into the app uh, in the form of a, a question and an answer. Uh, so for example, if you, if you, yeah, you hear uh, after whom America uh, was named, and then you think, oh, I'd like to remember that, then you just put this question and the answer inside of the Anki, and then um, you take up your phone, like some minutes uh, every, every morning, and just go through today's Anki, and then it will, after a while, pop up this, this question. And then you just think about it, after whom was American named? Uh, someone who knows? Yeah, yeah, good guess, but actually it was another guy who got the whole continent named after him. America Vespucci. Yeah, exactly, America Vespucci. So then you, you might just remember it, or you might have a... Uh, a picture of an American uh, American wasp wearing Gucci or, or something, uh, or you just just remember it, and then you think, yeah, it's Ameri Amerigo Vespucci, and then you you check and say, yeah, that was the right one, and then you just choose uh, if you remembered it, if it was yeah, you remember it good, or if it was easy or very easy, or if you didn't remember it, then what do you have it again, uh, and then Anki will with an algorithm bas based on this this forgetting curve uh, calculate when you need to memorize to repeat this the next time, uh, so that you have to repeat it as, as rarely as possible, uh, but still uh, can be sure that it will stay inside of your brain. So this is really cool. So I, I actually put everything that I want to, to keep in my memory for a long time into Anki and uh, checks it just some minutes every morning and, and then I know that it will stay there. So I like to, to compare Anki to a treasure chest where you put all your memories and you know that they will stay in there. And that's actually, uh, that actually makes it extremely much more motivating uh, when, you, when you're studying because you know that you will actually remember these things for the rest of your life instead of just forgetting them after some days, which is the normal case. So I definitely warmly recommend Anki. Um, yeah, and this was actually the f uh, all the three steps. So now you, you know almost everything there is to know about the memory techniques and how to memorize stuff. Uh, so I hope that you, you will actually try to use this after the lecture. Uh, but we have some, uh, one thing left uh, that I didn't, didn't talk about and that might be a little bit interesting. And that is how to memorize numbers. Oh. <laughs> Not supposed to put this on my water bottle. Uh, <laughs> mm. So yeah, it's, it's also a cool thing because a lot of people would find it, oh, let's see, would find it difficult to uh, probably dif difficult to memorize like a lot, lots of numbers, like long sequences of numbers. Some people might find it easy to memorize a few numbers like that, but, but for most people it's hard. Uh, and the reason for this is probably that numbers in themselves are quite meaningless, like they don't have any, any, if you don't assign them a meaning, they don't mean anything. Uh, and even if you try to, to use a memory palace to see a, a two in your hair and a five in your ear and nine in your eye, it would, you'd soon start to, to mix them up because it, it doesn't mean anything in particular to have a, a two in your hair, for example. Uh, so that's why the, these techniques are, uh, are based on, on converting numbers into something more interesting, into some more interesting pictures. Uh, and one of the first uh, methods that, you, that will be described if you read a memory book uh, is to convert every single digit into something that, that <coughs> looks like, something that has got sort of the same shape. Uh, so you may, for example, uh, picture uh, a goose uh, or a swan, a swan uh, holding a stick. And on top of the stick, it's balancing a hula hoop. Uh, and then you, you throw a happy meal through the hula hoop. Okay, can you see that in front of you? Yeah? Uh, and now you, you just memorize the, uh, the height of Sweden's highest mountain, Kebnekaise. Uh, because if you, if you translate this, these images into the pictures, it looks similar to the images, uh, then we, we start with this one, an idea? Yeah, exactly, it looks like a two, and then a stick, yeah, one, and uh, the hula hoop, zero, and then the happy meal, 
Yeah, exactly. That's a three because the, the McDonald's M looks sort of like a three if you twist it. So yeah, it, could, it didn't come up with something three. It looked like a three. So that would have to do. Uh, so now you know that the height of of Kaiser is. Two thousand one hundred. Yeah, two thousand one hundred three meters. So yeah, so it's quite a nice way, and it's possible to remember quite a lot with with only these simple symbols. Uh, but to make it a lot more effective, you have to uh, have um, have images for for more than just one digit. And so at these memory competitions, almost everyone has at least uh, one image for every two-digit number. Uh, some even have it for three-digit numbers. And this one guy, uh, a German guy, who's got a, 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 an image for every four-digit numbers. Uh, so he's learned 10,000 different images. Uh, and he's very good at remembering numbers. Um, but yeah, we, we won't uh, learn two, uh, like 10,000 uh, images now. But we'll start with uh, a simple system instead for, for coming up with images and words for more than one digit. Uh, and this system, uh, it's, it's very famous, uh, like if you study memory, it's very famous, and it's called the major system. Uh, and it's based on this table in which every, every digit uh, corresponds to one or more consonant sounds. So you just learn this table, so, so zero, for example, corresponds to the s sound or the z sound. Um, or the soft c, but that's yeah, the same sounds, it's, it's the sounds that matter here. And uh, one corresponds to t or d or th. Uh, and if, if there are more than one sound uh, assigned to a particular uh, digit, then it's, uh, it's because these sounds are like sort of in the same place in the mouth. Like if you say t, d, you notice that you, you use the same, like you put your tongue in the, in the same way. Uh, and it's really the same sound, but with and without tone. So it's the same with p, b, and f, v. Uh, so you just learn this table. Um, Maybe it takes you 20 minutes to, to learn it sort of well. Uh, and then you can use these sounds uh, together with vowels. Uh, since then there's no vowels in here, you can just put vowels around the sounds and inside and outside of them uh, to, to create words. Uh, and most, yeah, the best thing is then if you uh, create words that you can see as images later. Uh, so yeah, we, we'll do some examples. Uh, so we have, yeah, we have these, these numbers. So we start with a four. Uh, and then you just check which, which um, sound it corresponds to. And if you, if you learn the table, you all, of course, know it already. Uh, but look here, four, that corresponds to R, so the R sound. And then you can put vowels before or after or in between, yeah, not in between this one, but before or after uh, or on both sides of the R uh, to create a word. And you can also use uh, H and W because they, they're not also, they doesn't correspond to, to uh, a digit. So W, uh, H and also Y, and all the vowels can be used together with R sound to create a word. An idea of some word that could be created? Say it again? No. Row? We don't know. Okay, you don't know, but, but row is actually a word that could be, <laughs> could be created. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it might be, yeah, I'll give you some examples for, for the first one. So row, uh, or war, uh, or hair. Uh, or or uh, air like like any anything where you just use uh, vowels uh, w h and y, y together with with this sound and then in the right order uh, so yeah so hair could be a, like a simple thing you could also you could also see so you can remember hair instead of four of course if you only have one digit then you might just as well remember the digit but when you have more digits it's, it can be really useful to to convert them into words so if we we look at uh, seventy four uh, seven that corresponds to k or g so k or g, that sound, and uh, yeah, for still corresponds to r. So k r, and then balls. Say it. Car. car. Yeah, that's a very nice image. You can just see a car instead of 70, 74. Uh, something else. Cry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the strands. So yeah, so like in the beginning, of course, it's difficult, and you have to, to check the table all the time and, and to try to come up with this. But once you, you learn the table and, and you, you have it like naturally, then you can just very quickly create words out of out of long sequences of numbers. Uh, so that's really nice. So car or, or uh, cry, or it could be crow as well, uh, or core. Uh, yeah, that's great. And then uh, three one four. Now this is a little bit more difficult, but then you just check it again. Three that corresponds to m, m, and then one to t or d. And then or th, and then r again. So m mm, t r, mother. mother. Exactly. That's nice. If you want to remember the, the beginning of pi, you can just think of your mother, uh, or you can think of a, a meteor or a metro or yeah, anything like that. And then we have this last one, and I don't expect you to to come up with something for this, uh, but I'll just give it as an as an example. Um, like yeah, if you 
probably you probably want to divide this into smaller groups. So if you start with uh, seven six, that would be uh, gush. So that could be gosh. You just think they're saying gosh. And then um, uh, nine two, that's p and n. So that could be a piano. And then zero three zero, that's uh, s n s. So that could be uh, Sims, like The Sims. If you you know you know the game, yeah. Uh, so then you you might. Um, picture that you're, you're sitting, you're playing Sims, uh, you're playing the Australian version of the Sims, and then you, you notice that you, you can actually learn to play the piano in a game, and you didn't know this. Uh, so you're saying, gosh, I didn't know that I could play piano in the Sims. Uh, and if you do this, you actually uh, memorize the, uh, the surface area of uh, Australia in the square kilometers. Uh, so you might now say that, gosh, I didn't know that a piano in the Sims could teach me the surface area of Australia. Uh, so that's yeah, seven million six hundred ninety-two thousand and thirty square kilometers. So now you know that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is of course the thing that you yeah you have to learn this table, and then you you can convert sequences of numbers into uh, words and, and images. Uh, but then you also have to be able to do it the other way around. That's actually uh, easier. Uh, because then if you have a word uh, and want to, to convert it back into, Im into numbers, uh, you start by just uh, ignoring all of the vowels, uh, all of the vowels or W or, or Y or H. And then you, you look at what sounds you have left and then just convert them according to the table into numbers. So pen would be which number? Exactly, 92, because P corresponds to 9 and N corresponds to 2. And drone would be? Yeah, exactly, 142. Uh, so yeah, so D, that's 1, and R is 4, and N is 2 again. So 142. And spaghetti? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I hear that a lot of you are saying uh, uh, 09711. And it's almost correct, uh, but one thing to have in mind uh, using the system is that it's, it's only the sounds that matter. So if it's, if it's uh, yeah, like two T's, as if here, uh, then it's still only one t sound, uh, so you only count it as, as one. So yeah, uh, like, of course you could choose to count it the other way, but it's, it makes it easier. Uh, so that would be 0, 9, 7, 1. Alright, I think that you're ready for actually using this uh, on some things. Um, yeah, so you won't have to, to memorize the, the table, I will have it here on the side. Uh, but I wonder, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I wonder if you can answer them uh, using some of the information that you might have memorized earlier, uh, and uh, this table. And if you know the answer to these questions before, then you uh, don't answer it. But if you, uh, yeah, if you know it by using yeah, what you just learned and this table, then please answer it. Uh, so the first question is, which year uh, during the, the 1900s uh, did the Russians or the Soviet uh, get Sputnik up. So we're looking for two digits. 57, exactly. Uh, you probably all remember Luke, uh, Luke Skauke, and that's Luke, that's L, K, that is 5, L, and K, 7. So that's 57. So now you know that, okay, great. Uh, so let's see, uh, another question. Uh, which year uh, in the 1900s uh, did Elvis Presley die? Exactly. 77. So that's uh, cookie. So k k 77. Uh, okay, great. Well, you have a lot of, of uh, general knowledge in here. Um, okay, now this is a bit tricky one, uh, I suppose. Um, how many members uh, are there in the Swedish parliament? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, would you like to come it? <laughs> yeah, I think there's some people who got it. 349. So Marabu, that's M, mm, 3, R, 4, and B, 9. So now you know that as well. Uh, Marabu, 349 members. Uh, and then we have some uh, uh, questions here. Like, uh, I, I got three questions for you about uh, the Sydney Opera House. Uh, and the first question is, which year in the 1900s did the Opera House uh, open? 73, exactly. Gum, that would be. 
And uh, how many years did it take to, to, uh, to construct, to, to finish the construction of, uh, of the Opera House? 14, exactly. Ta, one, four. And finally, uh, how many million Australian dollars, uh, like counted by, by the time that I made it, uh, did it cost to, to build the Opera House? Yeah. 102 dozen these mm, 102. Great, so you're really good at this. <laughs> um, and then one uh, last control question. What is his name? <laughs> yes! <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, we're going to have some questions now. Um, so you, yeah, feel free to ask me any question. And if you have a question that you don't want to ask in front of everyone, you can just come up uh, later and, and ask it. Um, yeah? Uh, do you do any uh, dietary supplementation like ginkgo biloba or anything like that? Uh, say it again. Do you use any herbal uh, stimulants or additives to help with that? Um, no, actually, no, not usually. Uh, I'm a <laughs> I, I think yeah, it probably it probably could work, uh, but I'm, yeah, I haven't tried it so much. Uh, I'm a vegetarian, so I have a special diet, but I, I don't know if, if that affects it a lot. Um, yeah, I suppose that they, they still don't have uh, some, so many rules about uh, doping in the, the World Memory Championship, so you could probably try uh, any substance you, you'd like. Uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't tried it so far, so I, I can't say anything about it. Uh, yes? Uh, yeah, that's also a good question. Like, I, uh, if I have a particular journey in a memory palace, uh, I, um, I, wouldn't, uh, like I, I wouldn't place new information on the old information. Uh, I could do that, but then I would sort of overwrite the old information. So it's, it's quite easy. You, you, you can really choose what you want to, to keep in your memory palace and what you want to, to take away from it. Uh, because if you want to erase something, you can just overwrite it with new information. Uh, so I might use the same place, but I, I use a different journey. So I might use my house for several journeys, but they, they're not, they cross, but they don't, yeah, it's not the same journey. Mm. Uh, How do you know yeah. which journey is for which sequence? Uh, yeah, usually you just, you just remember it. It's, it's obvious, yeah, since you, you remember that you, you were at this place when you, when you memorized this. Uh, so it's quite easy to, to remember, but I also have a, like a memory palace where I put all my memory palaces. Uh, so I can go through that and, and easily find what I, what I want to, to find. So if I wouldn't come up with it, I would look, look in my memory palace palace. <laughs> do, you, um, do you know... Um, yeah. <laughs> do you know how to memorize um, mathematical equations and things like that? Um, yeah, sort of. It's, uh, it is possible and uh, I have sometimes done it. Um, but I think that, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, if, if you've got like, a lot of mathematical equations, uh, then you might want to memorize them. But, but the best thing usually is to just try to really understand, understand them, because then you'd probably be able to come up with them uh, even without, yeah, without memorizing them, and then you remember them anyway. Uh, but it is possible, it isn't extremely convenient. You have to sort of create a system for different images for, for square root and, and sine and cosine, etc. Uh, but if you do that, then, then you could sort of uh, memorize them in a pretty similar way to memorizing numbers. Uh, say it again. Do you recommend doing the crocodile thing in um, the street? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's actually, yeah, it was really, really good. And the second time I actually didn't have to memorize it, so I could focus completely on the crocodile. And it was so cool and so big, like, really like a dinosaur. It's, it's, I've actually never seen a, a real crocodile before. So, uh, yeah, coming from Sweden, that was a, an extremely cool experience. I, I definitely think you should do it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And you might want to, to memorize some cyclones as well. That was quite fun as well. <laughs> Do you ever forget anything? <laughs> uh, that's also a good question that I, I get asked a lot. Uh, and yeah, the, the fact is uh, that I do. Um, I do forget things quite often, actually, because I, uh, since this is something that I, I, I wasn't born with, but it's, it's something that I've learned to, to use, and I have to consciously use the techniques to memorize things. Like, it's, sometimes it's almost automatic, but it's, I, I have to make a sort of conscious effort to, to memorize it and, and to use it. Uh, so when, I, when I'm not using the memory techniques, I, I forget just as much as anyone else. Uh, so most I don't use it. I, I mostly use it when it's something that I really want to remember, something that I think might be important or, or fun to, to remember. Then I use it, uh, but otherwise I, I don't. So, so I, forgot, I still forget quite a lot of things. Can you recite to us the memory palace 
last Burma and Women's Cyclones the other day? Um, yeah, actually, I, I could have done it, uh, but I, um, I have overwritten, I've used the same memory palace to, to overwrite write it with other stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. I probably would have, would have been able to do it with some effort. But, uh, Johan, could you recite the 13 numbers that you started with? Uh, and can someone just <laughs> back up on the screen? <laughs> yeah? Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So, yeah, can, you, can Simon put them on? Okay, I'll just go, go through them to make sure that I have them there. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, Susan David ice cream, and then Ron Weasley, and the saxophone, and then Yoda and the heart and then the high jumper with the hula hoop and then finally Leia and the, the beak. Okay, yeah, I think I got them. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, I won't watch. <laughs> okay, so it should be uh, 3, 1, 5, 1, 8, 9, 4, 2, 1, 0, 3, 7, 8, 3, 1, 0, 4, 6, 8, 5. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Three, one, six, eight, five, six, two, one, seven, five. Yeah, so that, that's also that's one of the, I think, the coolest things uh, with these techniques, that it actually, once you've got it in there, uh, you can just relax, because you know that they, it will stick there for a very long time, so you don't have to, like if I would have tried to memorize digits before, I would have to repeat them all the time in my mind and, uh, until, until I was about to read them, but now I can just memorize them and then, yeah, don't care about it. <laughs> um, when you uh, were recalling the Oscars and you remembered in increments of five, did you use the same trigger for every five years? Um, uh, the same image for every five years? Yeah, so you know how you had, you would go to the nearest five and then look back or work forward. Do you use the same memory trigger for each five years? Um, well, actually, I use uh, like my image for that year. So uh, I use my image for, uh, for 60, for example, which is a telephone. Uh, so I, pu I put a telephone on, on the year 60, and then I put my image for 65. Uh, which is like a balloon uh, at, on, on the 65, year 65. Uh, so I can, when you say a year, uh, like if you say 73, then I think yeah, the closest one is 75. And I think of the image of 75, which is a beak, and I see where that beak is, and then I know that's 75 and then count two steps backwards. So you never repeat the same visual? Uh, not not, not in if I do it like this, but I do obviously, like every time I want to remember 75, I always use a beak. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I sort of remember the same image in a lot of different places. Uh, but since you're placing them in a memory palace, or so you're associating them, associating them to, to a particular image, uh, then you 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 know uh, you, you don't like mess it up with something else, but you know exactly where everything is. So you're memorizing a memory. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Can you memorize two dimensions memory as being lyrics for music? So like, can you remember the lyrics while you remember the music at the same time? Um, well, it's, I, I suppose it's, it's a little bit difficult because you, you sort of, uh, it's easier to memorize like one kind of information at a time. Uh, of course you can alter between information, but it's, if I, if, if I really wanted to memorize like music and the lyrics at the same time, I would have to sort of create a, uh, some, some image for every combination of a tone and a word uh, or something like that. Uh, so yeah, so I think it might be difficult, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, just rem remembering music, uh, as, as I suppose that's quite quite different from rem remembering this other stuff because it's it's difficult to just create like create a, an image for a particular song or music or so. So I think uh, yeah, actually that the memory techniques wouldn't help you a lot by with remembering music. Remembering the, li the lyrics, of course, could could they could help you a lot with that. Um, can you see a picture and can describe the picture? I mean, it's a similar kind of question, but like the dimension. Uh, picture to have a look at it and can describe it again. Um, like, like a photographic memory? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, actually not. I think that's something that you probably have to be born with. Uh, and I actually believe that they, they, I, don't, I don't think that there's anyone in the world who actually have uh, like a 100% photographic memory. Uh, there are obviously people who, who memorize things very easily and they maybe can have like a photographic memory in some areas. Uh, but I think that there's, uh, they haven't been able to scientifically prove that uh, a total photographic memory actually exists, and we haven't have anyone uh, haven't had anyone at the World Memory Championships to try to to win with a photographic memory yet. Uh, so then I yeah, I don't have it. I just use these techniques, uh, but that's sort of enough for me. <laughs> 
if you how do you possibly remember three and a half thousand binary numbers in the right sequence? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that you asked about that. Uh, I didn't really tell you. I um, uh, it's it's the same principle. I, I convert it into uh, into images, and to do this, I don't know if we have the uh, numbers. Yeah, maybe it doesn't matter so much. But yeah, let's uh, see what. Oh, all right. Now uh, we'll just uh, you just have to to picture it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we can leave it leave it to be there. Uh, well, I I, um, I convert every uh, sequence of six binary digits uh, into an image. Uh, so I. Um, uh, I actually, to, to, you can, of course, you can use a lot of different methods to come up with these images. But I, I just looked at the sequence and tried to to come up with something that I thought that it, it could look like. Uh, like, yeah, you had, to, you had to be a little bit creative to, to come up with something for every every sequence. But there are 64 different sequences sequences of six digits, so I only have to come up with 64 different images. Uh, so, for example, uh, one zero 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 one one. I thought that, that looked a little bit like uh, like a mouse trap with three pieces of cheese in it. Uh, so that's a cheese uh, for me, a piece of cheese. Uh, and um, yeah, zero one zero one zero zero. Uh, that looks sort of like like four like four heads. And then uh, the second head, or the second person is swing, swinging her arms like this. Uh, and when I was younger, I, I uh, me and my two brothers and my cousin Nora uh, usually <laughs> spend a lot of time together. And and she was always doing this with her arms. So that that sequence is Nora uh, to me. <laughs> so that's how it works. And then I just learn these images. Of course, that, that takes a while, but once you learn them, then I just uh, combine them, also three and three, into small stories and put them in a very, very long memory journey. And uh, yeah, that works very well. And if you do it, and then maybe one repetition, and then you have it. I don't know how you spell your name. How do you spell your name? Uh, my name. Uh, it's it's uh, J O N A S. Uh, and then V O N with a small V, uh, like a yeah, small O N, and then E S S E N. Thank you. Do you have an email? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. If you're interested, like if you if you if found this uh, technique interested, or if you uh, if you forget uh, some things, uh, some of them, and, and want to yeah to to remember what, what you were like, then you you're of course free to contact me. Uh, I have an email. Uh, it's it's info at jonasvanessen.se. Uh, but you can also visit my, my webpage, which is jonas1sn.se. Uh, it's probably as easy uh, as memorizing the, uh, the, the mail. Uh, so, and then they have all the, the contact information. It's in Swedish, so it might be a little bit tricky to find it, but I think you, you'll be able to do it. Uh, so, yeah, yeah so, so, so feel free to, to contact me and if, you, if some questions come up later. Um, no, not this time. Well, actually, it's it's very different every year because uh, like it's it's such a, a new kind of competition. So so sometimes they get a big sponsor and sometimes they don't. Uh, so the first time I won, they didn't have a sponsor at all, so there were no money. Uh, the second time there were a little bit of money, uh, like last year there was some money. And this year they're actually having a really really big Chinese sponsor. So I think that the, the winner will get uh, at least two hundred thousand uh, dollars. So that's that's quite cool. So I, I really uh, yeah try to do it. Again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then of course you also get get a like a trophy and medals and so. Do you need a manager, by the way? <laughs> well, look, we probably need to, to wrap it up. Um, and I should mention actually that I've actually been uh, lecturing in this hall maybe about 50 times, and I've never been able to maintain students in this room for more than about half an hour. And somehow, despite the fact that it's seven o'clock, uh, most of the audience has remained. So it's a really a great testament to an incredible talk. So uh, join me in thanking Jonas for. I, 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 um, yeah, I have one last image that I would just yeah as, as the grand finale. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I'd like to just just wrapping up, up by saying that I, I hope that you enjoyed the speech. It was really really a lot of fun to to. And give it to you, and um, I uh, I hope that you you're interested like like you got a little bit interested in these techniques and might use some of them in your daily life or might go and borrow some book or Google it or so, and that when you go out here or back to your, your school or back to your work that you take a deep breath and then draw your super starlasting swords of doom. Thank you. <laughs>